NASA scientists are hoping they have been able to grab a handful of clues as to the birth of the solar system, the origins of it all. This is NASA animation of the moment, 332 or so million kilometers away from us, when the robot arm on the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft had a few seconds to stretch out, snatch up as much dust and rock material off the surface of Bennu. That is the name of the asteroid. Scientists won't know exactly, we could hear it today, but it could be a little while if Osiris pulled it off. But just getting there and doing it, well, look at the celebration. OREX MSA on OREX OP. Sample collection is complete and the back away burn has executed. All right, we're on our way back. <laughs> so those are actual celebrations, and these are actual images as it made a practice run uh, over the surface of Bennu back in the summer. That was the practice. If it turns out that the spacecraft came up empty or not with enough material, there are opportunities for further tests. We have a lot of coverage of this because, as we were telling you yesterday, there is a very important Canadian connection to the OSIRIS-REx mission, and he's with me now, or one of the Canadians who has a connection. But Michael Daly is the lead instrument scientist for the OLA, the OSIRIS-REx Laser Altimeter. He's also an engineering prof at York University. He's in Burlington, Ontario. Professor, good morning. Good morning. 6.12 last night, where were you and what were you doing? I was sitting here in my home watching with everyone else. <laughs> and, and, and how did it go? It went just perfectly. I, I mean, I think it went to everyone's expectations. You're, you're always sitting on the edge of your seat, you know, because we all know that things can sometimes go off plan. But in this particular case, it was exactly like the practices went. It was exactly like it was planned and, and what we all worked for. Um, for how many years did you work for, just so everyone is clear? Oh, about a dozen. Getting set for that moment as the lead instrument scientist. And why don't we decide, or not decide, but discuss exactly what that involves? Because that Canadian technology, the OLA, uh, really came into play in, in determining that success and finding the spot where the spacecraft was able to land and collect. Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, the, the part that I was responsible for was the Canadian contribution, which was one of the main instruments on the spacecraft, and that was what's called a laser altimeter. So it measures the distance from the spacecraft to Bennu, and by measuring that distance a lot of times and knowing exactly where all those distances were measured to and where the spacecraft was, we were able to build a very accurate shape of Bennu, and that shape had amazing detail on, of the surface of Bennu that was a great help in picking the sample site and maintaining the spacecraft safety and getting it to the, to the surface. And as I understand it, surprising detail. It wasn't smooth as you thought. So what you were able to reveal really enabled them to choose the best place to land. Is that correct? Yeah, and I have to admit, when we saw the, the actual data come back from the instrument and we started to process it, you know, as you said, we expected Bennu to be, be quite a bit smoother than it was. So the instrument performed the way that I expected it to, but Bennu was so much more interesting and the, there was so much more detail to see that the, the data back from the instrument was just phenomenal. So I was mentioning that we don't know exactly whether it was able to collect the amount that you want to work with. And we could get something as early as today on that, Professor. Is that, is that what you're waiting for too? Yeah, I think it might be beyond today. Okay. Um, you know, we're trying to measure a fairly small amount, 60 grams with a rotating spacecraft. Uh, so we may have some indication, uh, but I think it'll be some days before we know for sure. And then that is what is going to, when you get the amount that you're collecting, it's going to come back to Earth. And in 2023, because Canada and your role and Canada as a member partner in all of this, gets some of the material from this asteroid. The first time we've had this kind of material to study on Earth. Tell us what we could learn from it. 
Well, really, these asteroids are sort of laboratories that hold clues to how the solar system was formed and what kind of materials were were there um, during the solar system formation. Many of these materials are are important for um, for how you know the Earth evolved. So it's 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 very important from that perspective. It's also important for us to better understand these bodies and. You know, we're really the first generation that could protect ourselves from from collisions. And then there's just a great many science questions. You know, we know a lot about uh, asteroids from our meteorite collection, but we have some indications from data on OSIRIS-REx that we might not have some of this material in our meteorite collections uh, in any form because some of it looks like it might be so fragile it would never uh, enter the Earth and 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 be found because the atmosphere would break it up. So there must be a lot of excitement to get that back here for 2023 and to see it and to study it and to unlock its secrets. Why don't we give a bit of a shout out to the Canadian Space Agency and to your team for this? Because I can see, and justifiably, I mean, you must be so proud for this, this scientific first. Yeah, well, our part was really, you know, characterizing the asteroid, but the main mission objective is really the sample and bringing it back in 2023. So, you know, this this really is the culmination of what we've all all been working towards, and and the team's very large, and I've been privileged to to work with a, a great many people, and that I would happily uh, work with again if given the opportunity, because the the team was just phenomenal. Isn't that great? Well, nothing would have been collected if it hadn't been for you pinpointing where they could land to do the collection. So uh, characteristically modest from a Canadian perspective. Listen, I have lots of questions because I love science stories. But I'll tell you what, Professor, could I ask you a favor? Many people are sharing, are sharing your excitement. And we made last week some new friends on our show who are very, very keen on space um, and who were watching as you were at 612. And I feel like they might like an opportunity to meet you and join in our conversation. So why don't we say good morning again? They're up super early for us to Theron De Silva. Hi, Theron. Hello. And Alfie Chan, fantastically dressed for this morning. NASA. Hi, Alfie. Hi, Heather. Also in Richmond Hill. I told you we'd be talking again, guys, and here you are back just a couple of days later. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> what were you both were you both watching the live stream? Yeah, yesterday. Yes. You were did. yesterday, six twelve yeah. as it was all coming off. Okay. Theron, what did you think? Yeah. It was quite interesting actually. It was kind of like, you know, some people chatting like on like, you know, those um those shows where are selling you things and then it interrupts and it's like and it says, Oh, touchdown completed or something. And when there was touchdown completed, what did you think, Alfie? Um, I just was like smiling from my left ear to my right ear. And I was just so amazed that this was something we could have done in the next generation, how advanced this technology was. And we actually did it. We're actually bringing something down from the heavens of space and down to here to actually study. And I actually um, was also really um, happy for the scientists because they had to, before they even, even, even launched it, they had to come up with so many scenarios like, what if Osiris Rex crashes? What happens if it tilts it? What happens if this happens? Well, I mean, that happens. And then so on. And they worked around all of that just to do this. And they did it. They actually did it. And... As you said, they came up with all sorts of scenarios, and it was Canadian scientists, in part anyway, Alfie and Theron, who yeah, were doing that incredible work. And so we've asked Professor Daly to stay around because this is one of the Canadian scientists who did that. You've got big fans, wow. Professor Daly, in, 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 our science, in our science friends. What do you think of, of their observations? Yeah, I think they're great. I just need them to grow up so they can come to a university. <laughs> okay, Alfie, you get to start. Alfie wants to be an, an astronaut and a journalist, Professor Daly. We learned that last week. So, Alfie, we've kept Professor Daly on so you can ask him some questions. You get to go first. Okay. Hi, Alfie. Um, who, hi Professor Daly. Uh, 
who and how are the amazing people that made the uh, Cyrus Rex mission happen? Oh, uh, well, the, the mission is a NASA mission. And so it was led uh, by Professor Dante Loretta out of the University okay. of Arizona. But there are lots of organizations and, and these missions take a great, you know, hundreds of people to, to make these things, thousands, probably thousands to make these things happen. There have been lots of people with many, many skills uh, that contribute to something like this. Did you hear Professor Daly earlier, boys? Uh, he was saying he's been working on the instrument for Osiris Rex for 12 years. Yeah. That's longer Whoa. than both of you have been alive, which is really incredible <laughs> to me. Theron, you get a question. When, when Professor That's Daly talks so about long. the team, I just want to remind him it's the Canadian Space Agency. Your dad's formally with the Canadian Space Agency, so you have a direct connection there. What's your, what's your question, Theron? Um, well, how hard was it to actually make the OLA and LIDAR? Like, was it really hard? Uh, so with these projects, they're very long. So there are, you know, easy and fun times. And then there are hard times when you, you really have to pull together and, and what work through some challenges. What was the hardest um, part well, of it? Yeah, so there are times when you're, you have some technical challenges to get over. Um, in particular, we had challenges with our scanning mirror. And, you, you know, the schedule is very, very tight sometimes because, you know, that rocket ship is going to leave whether you're on it or not with your instrument. So we, we got through those challenges and, and we're really happy with the result. But there, are, there definitely were times where... You, we really had to dig in and, and all work hard. Is that okay? Can you pause for a second, Theron? I want to ask, uh, give Alfie another opportunity because he had some fun questions about, you know, s exploring the universe. I know, Alfie. Oh, of yeah. course. What's your next question? Mm, well, this one's going to be, well, you know what? Why did you plan to send a spaceship up to space and we spent so many years on it? Why did you um, send it up there just to collect um, nickel sized samples and come back down? Well, you know, when we go out to an asteroid to collect a sample, uh, we, we get a sample back that hasn't been affected by coming through the Earth's atmosphere, uh, like our, our meteorites and our meteorite collection. And it hasn't been affected by the Earth's environment. So it's very much like it was when it was sitting out in space. We also know exactly what asteroid it came from and where on that asteroid it came from. So it allows us to be much more precise with the kind of questions we're, we're asking and, and the things we're learning about it, we know inform our understanding of that particular asteroid. So it, it, it's, a, it's a question of being a much more precise with our understandings of the whole origins okay. of things and Theron you get the last question for Dr. Daly we're not we're, we have a moment or two extra but the last question for Dr. Daly Theron what would you like to know about the science or about the career path maybe whatever you yeah, want yeah what what is your career path how did you make it to this moment well unlike you I I really never thought that I would be working in space and sometimes things just happen um, you know, I started, I went to graduate school and, and did a lot of work in optics. Uh, and then I ended up working for a little while in the nuclear industry and then ended up in, wow. in space industry working wow. on things like the Canadarm2 and, and the Dexter robot and then the Phoenix Mars instruments, our first instruments we sent to Mars that are wow. sitting on the surface of Mars now. And then I became moved and became a professor and uh, started leading our OSIRIS-REx contribution. So wow. um, you have a lot more opportunity to, to plan and make the right choices uh, while you're young to, for a career in space. It just kind of happened for me. Okay. <laughs>
You know That's what? I amazing. They already have the spark, Professor Daly. You may just have lit it further there. Listen, uh, Professor <laughs> Mike Daly, I, c number one, congratulations again on the success of, of the mission so far and of your part on Canada's behalf in it. And thank you for being part of our surprise because we just wanted to bring any reason to bring back our, our friends Alfie and Theron. So you get the closing word, guys. Was that, was that, did I surprise you? Did you know? Yeah. Okay, there you no. go. So, so now when you talk about being an astronaut or a journalist, you can add, you know, engineer, astrophysicist into the whole career plan. <gasps> That's exciting. Okay, tell me a little bit, Theron, one more comment from you. Overall, what do you think, because you were talking about that you were really impressed as you were watching it at, at uh, 612 on the live stream. For you, yeah. what do you think is the, uh, the thing that will be interesting that we get out of this science research? Well, because Bennu is an asteroid that was actually created about the same time as our solar system. Now, the fact that it's actually in our solar system means that it could hold so many of our secrets in history, almost like just a floating time capsule. Exactly. This takes us back to the very, very earliest moments. So, okay, you'll be following that. And I know, Alfie, last word to you. You might have been a little bit nervous about TAG because you were talking to us about, um, as we were setting things up with you on the phone, just how precise that TAG mission, that touch and go, had to go. So uh, tell yes. me a little bit more about why you were so impressed by what happened up there. Mm, I'm so impressed because this is like the first ever sample collection of material from an asteroid, like a literally moving asteroid that spits rocks everywhere to return to Earth. And um, I'm also impressed because the CSA, OSIRIS-REx Laser Altimeter, OLA, is part of the missions. And um, because CSA is part of the mission, some pieces of the asteroid will be given to us to study. And um, because... Um, it's a new chapter of space generation to me. Like, uh, as a like the sample will provide information for the next generation to learn more about the solar system. As far as mentioned, it's like a floating time capsule in space waiting to be explored. And um, how all the brilliant, dedicated scientists, engineers, and people involved, like they each found a way. Like every single challenge, like maybe there was probably like fifty challenges, and they came up with each single solution to like jump over them, like hurdles, and ha um and we might discover something new and there are actually lots of precise calculations and thoughtful designs on the instruments and the osiris Rock spacecraft and they actually overcome different risk factors into account and the precise and technical challenges of this mission will actually benefit like future space exploration minutes and maybe missions. and you so and you way, in the future maybe i hate to cut you off yeah, Alfie, maybe but i have to let you get ready for school again today that's a really thing oh, I, yeah. again isn't isn't it amazing theron that he was studying this one particular instrument and creating it and all the science longer that you've even been both of your friends alive yeah it's incredible yes. yeah. gives you a sense of what's in store if you become scientists because the one of the NASA's project, I think, they had to build a spaceship in four years. But this one small instrument, you know, just like a little arm that sticks out of a small satellite, took 12. It's amazing all of the brain power that went into that moment that you have helped us appreciate so much more this morning. Thank you for visiting with us again. We hope to have you back next time we have space news, okay? Okay. Okay. Okay, friends. See you next Bye, time. Heather. Bye, Alfie. Bye, Bye. Theron. See you next time. Bye. See you next time. Bye.